Hi everyone, Tristan here from the CPAP store. Today we're gonna to be looking at CPAP myths and reality. Now this is gonna be more geared towards people who are thinking about using CPAP therapy. Uh, if you've like been on CPAP for the past five years, this video probably won't help you out very much. You can still give us a like, but don't waste your time. So if you are thinking of using CPAP or someone's mentioned CPAP to you and you don't really know what it is and you're kind of thinking about it, this video might help a little bit. Myth number one, sleep apnea is just snoring. A lot of people with sleep apnea are gonna be snoring, almost all of them, but sleep apnea is much more than just snoring. And what's happening with sleep apnea is that you're stopping breathing in the middle of the night. So apneas are when you stop breathing. There's an index for it called the AHI, the apnea hypotenia index. That's how many times you stop breathing within an hour. So your sleep therapist can figure out if using CPAP would be right for you. So it's not just snoring in the sense that you're not getting a full breath of air or you know your breathing's a little bit constricted. It's actually stopping breathing altogether, which is unhealthy, especially if you are living with sleep apnea for an extended period of time. Now the next myth is only overweight people get sleep apnea. In reality, it's often the opposite. So it's often people with sleep apnea become overweight. This is because your body releases cortisol uh, when you are stressed out. And if you have sleep apnea and you're constantly waking up because you're gasping for air kind of, your body's gonna be stressed out when it's sleeping because it's always trying to figure out if it can get that next breath. Cortisol is one of the hormones that helps retain and gain weight. So a lot of people with sleep apnea, it could just be the way their jaw is structured, what the way their uh, tongue is structured, um, have very mild sleep apnea. Then because they go 10 years having poor sleeps, low energy, bodies releasing different hormones to gain weight because your body's stressed out every time you go to sleep, then you gain weight. And then when you gain weight, there's excess fat tissue uh, on your tongue or fat tissue around your neck. And this is gonna make you snore even louder. And this is when a lot of people say, oh, I gained weight and therefore I now have sleep apnea. Where in many cases, people have sleep apnea first and that makes them gain weight. Now that being said, there are a lot of people who don't have sleep apnea that gain weight and then have it afterwards. And having sleep apnea is 100% related to the gain in weight, but perpetuating that notion that only people who are overweight have sleep apnea is definitely false. The next myth is CPAP is the only treatment for sleep apnea, okay? So there's a variety of different uh, treatments. The main one and generally most effective is going to be CPAP therapy. CPAP therapy is when you have uh, basically a CPAP machine blowing continuous pressurized air into your airway down uh, past your you know, tongue and throat, keeping your tongue and your airway open. Okay, so that's generally the most effective and most common solution for sleep apnea. There's other options as well. For example, there are uh, oral devices which can help either pull out your tongue or move your jaw in a way that pushes your lower jaw slightly forward, kind of bringing your tongue uh, off the back of your airway. Now this doesn't always work. You have to talk to your dentist about that. Uh, or your sleep therapist and figure out if you have a jaw where an oral appliance is gonna work. Um, generally, if you have really severe sleep apnea, uh, the CPAP is the way to go. Uh, there are other treatments similar to the oral way. It doesn't work with everything, but there is companies out there um, such as Inspire Sleep, and what they do is they put an implant into your um, body, and then when your body is going to take a breath, the device recognizes that, uh, sends a little impulse to your tongue to constrict those muscles opening that airway. So CPAP is definitely not the only treatment for sleep apnea. Okay, on to the next myth. Using a CPAP machine is uncomfortable and impractical. This one, there's two sides to that. Uh, the masks have come a long way, especially within the last five, 10 years. Um, there's different features now that weren't available years ago for sleep apnea, the way you can control and really dial in your humidity, uh, the different types of masks that are available, cradle, pillow, full face, um, hybrid full face that go under your nose versus over. There's so many more options these days. And so saying that using a CPAP machine is just super uncomfortable. I can't, it's not really a blanket statement for everyone, but there's gonna be a lot of people who have tried sleep app therapy and don't like it. But that being said, a lot of those people don't really learn enough about CPAP therapy for themselves to get really comfortable with it. Uh, CPAP therapy is a lot like going to the gym. If you go to the gym for the first time, it's very hard to you know, bench press a lot of weight or squat a lot of weight, right? Um, it's very, very hard because your muscles aren't ready for it. 
Same thing with CPAP therapy. If your body's not used to breathing in with pressure, you're gonna use it and you're gonna be like, this sucks. That's why it's very important to talk to your sleep therapist. Start at a lower pressure and over the course of a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, eventually get to your prescribed pressure that's gonna help you the most. So your lungs and your body are way more used to breathing in that air. But just trying it for the first time on your own without any information, without any help, is definitely uncomfortable and often impractical. Just like the blanket statement of going to the gym sucks and it's the worst thing ever. Uh, people might say that if they are not used to going to the gym, but most people who do go to the gym really enjoy it. Same thing with CPAP. If you actually take the time to learn about CPAP and use your CPAP machine properly, chances are uh, you're really going to enjoy it and it'll be just like any habit where you can't live without it and it's gonna be a lot healthier for you in the long run. So the next myth is if you're not feeling tired, you don't have sleep apnea. There's lots of different side effects to sleep apnea. A lot of people don't feel tired throughout the day, just generally, but they have sleep apnea and they might not really realize how tired they actually feel or how much more energy they might be kind of missing out on. So if you have sleep apnea, if your partner's saying, hey, you're snoring a lot, you're moving a lot in bed, um, you're kind of jostling around, or you realize that you're snoring or you're kind of waking up often throughout the night, you might want to go talk to your sleep therapist. Now, your sleep therapist is going to be able to confirm if you have sleep apnea or you don't. And then with learning the CPAP machine, treating that sleep apnea, you might realize that, yeah, you weren't feeling tired before, but now you feel way more energetic. Your body currently might just be so used to not getting enough sleep that it can function fine without it, um, but you definitely should get that checked out if people are telling you, hey, you're snoring super loud, you're moving a lot, we think you have sleep apnea, and you're not feeling tired throughout the day, you might still wanna go get that checked out and see if there's anything you can do to make your life a little better. Okay, the next thing is CPAP cures sleep apnea. That is a myth. CPAP does not cure sleep apnea. CPAP helps you open that airway so when you use it, you won't have apneas or you won't stop breathing throughout the night. If you're using your CPAP machine for let's say five years and one day you wanna stop, your sleep apnea will come right back. It doesn't cure it. Like you're not gonna be able to stop sleep apnea. It's one of those things that you're gonna be able to just have a better sleep. It's kinda of like a wheelchair. You know, having a wheelchair isn't gonna make someone um, unparalyzed. It's not gonna heal or, or cure someone who is paralyzed, similar with a sleep apnea machine. Now, that being said, the sleep apnea machine will prevent and cure other symptoms of sleep apnea. For example, a sleep apnea machine will cure the tiredness that you might have. A sleep apnea machine will cure uh, your restless nights or will uh, prevent heart disease and other uh, diseases that you can get from lack of sleep. So all those symptoms of sleep apnea uh, a CPAP machine might be able to cure, but the actual sleep apnea itself um, is just probably the way your jaw or your tongue or your throat is kind of formed, okay? It's not gonna like change those things. Now the next myth is sleep apnea is not a serious condition. It is actually quite a serious condition because it has a very high likelihood to lead to other uh, uh, health issues such as high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, et cetera, et cetera. So um, if you think your quality of life is important, then you would definitely say that it is a serious condition. Um, and if you say avoiding a heart attack or other high blood pressure, hypertension, stuff like that, if uh, avoiding that is important, then definitely it is serious. So sleep apnea, I would say, is a serious condition uh, that should be treated and shouldn't just be overlooked just because you can get by without treating it. Okay, the last myth is CPAP machines are loud and disruptive. Now, of course, my name is Tristan. I work for the CPAPstore.ca. So I'm not gonna give you some hogwash answer like, no, they're super, super quiet and you'll never notice it. A lot of clients do notice it, okay? A lot of clients do notice the noise of uh, the CPAP machine. That being said, it is quieter than a lot of people think. Um, especially when you're sleeping, you know, you fall asleep, you get used to it. And it's very similar to a white noise machine or a fan in the bedroom, okay? So you definitely can hear it. It's not like it's a silent little mouse. But that being said, it's a pretty unannoying sound. It's, it's essentially white noise. And if you do have a partner, 
I'm sure that a CPAP machine going is gonna be a lot nicer than big, loud snoring throughout the night. Okay, so that wraps up the video for myths and realities for people starting CPAP. I hope you found this video a little bit useful. Um, if so, please leave a comment. If it wasn't useful, please leave in the comments your question that wasn't answered in the video and hopefully other commenters or myself will uh, answer it. I'll try my best to get to as many comments as I can. Consider subscribing as well for all things CPAP. And that's all guys, take care.